here with Dr. Mary Galinsky, who's an associate professor of medicine and infectious disease at Emory University um, in Atlanta, Georgia, yes. correct? As well as president and founder of the Malaria Foundation International. Um, Dr. Galinsky, can you tell us briefly what does your organization do? Well, as you said, I hold two hats. So as with the Emory University, I'm heading the Malaria Research Program. And one thing I can say there is it's, as I said in my presentation, solving the malaria problem is not just about research. So while at the university, we're also reaching out to the broader scope of the university. We work with students from the public health angle, from the business angle. We work with undergrads who just want to get involved and know what they can do at an undergrad undergraduate grassroots level. So while I'm at the university, it's a, it's a broad picture, focusing largely on the research, but reaching out, as I said today, to the masses to find different ways people control the disease. And as far as the Malaria Foundation goes, we are the grassroots organization to fight malaria, having been founded in 1992. We were on the scene prior to a lot of the attention that's there today. So our main role is to keep that awareness raising going. We we're the first ones to get messages out there. Now as new messages are coming out by other groups who have come on in the last five to ten years, we're helping to refine those messages or, you know, just helping to promote those messages when, you know, a lot of good work is being done. Okay. And specifically, um, you had also talked about the, um, uh, the President's uh, uh, Malaria Initiative. And I was hoping that you could comment on how a grassroots organization such as yours and a government organization can be working together for the eradication of malaria. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's really wonderful to see these this high level attention, I should say. You know, when we, when we first started out, we had a few smaller organizations, you know, taking, taking a look at malaria. Um, various government agencies were paying more attention. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation came on, as you know, and they established programs to make a vaccine, malaria vaccine initiative, or make new drugs, medicines for malaria venture. But now when it's at the high level of a president's malaria initiative, we know we're really going to be getting the bigger press, which is what really is going to make a difference. So what can we do? We certainly can work together. And in fact, just a few weeks ago, I spoke with the director of that program, Admiral Tim Zemer, and he said just that. We've got to find ways to work together. We've been promoting the importance of bringing on businesses, faith-based leaders, teachers, students. The President's Malaria Initiative is also speaking the same language. Right. So let's just talk briefly about how the, um, I guess, the initiatives that you are taking here in the United States, I guess, are best translated in, say, a country like Liberia, and um, what types of, of programs, and, and just how this is sort of transferred to countries where the, the prevalence of malaria is so predominant. How what is transferred? Let me clarify, please. Just how, um, how initiatives that you're taking over in the U.S. are translated to countries such as Liberia, where the prevalence of malaria is so dominant. Uh, very much through partnerships. There's a major global community. When we, we, we happen to be based in the United States, but we're meeting with people and talking with people from around the globe on a very regular basis. Certainly the internet makes that easy for us, but there's often meetings and interactions with people globally. I presented one instance with the Student Leaders Against Malaria program of children here in the United States communicating with children in Kenya. That's just one small example, but a lot of the work being done today is through partnership. Right. Um, you also talked about um, in your presentation, I guess, a, a multifaceted approach, if you will, that it wasn't just about um, a policy or it just wasn't about education or it just wasn't about a drug or it just wasn't about prevention. It was this multifaceted approach. And I was hoping that you could just sort of briefly comment a little bit further on that. The main comment I have is that the whole idea of educating people is important. What I don't want to have happen is that we, we're out there supposedly educating students or the masses through, the, the, as I said, the sports entertainers and, and whatnot by having a single message. You know, that, that's misleading. So from my main comment is that I think from the get-go, we want people to know we're dealing with a complex disease. There is no single magic bullet. We need a multi-pronged approach. But we should be there for the long haul. 
And reality is we're not, not only going to be making a difference in saving lives, but this formation of a team, a global team, is actually, love, it's actually fun. I think when we start bringing more and more people, people are going to want to get involved. When I started the Malaria Foundation, my internal slogan was, nobody will want to be left out. And what I see now happening 10 years later, there's this growing surge of activity, and I truly believe no one will want to be left out. You know, we're going to be having fun in the process. We're tackling a very serious disease, and we're, we're making a difference step by step, but it is a long haul. We're not going to mislead. It's not five years, 10 years. It's long haul, but we're going to have fun doing it. Wonderful. Galinsky, thank you very much for your time. We appreciate that. Thank you very much. Excellent. Wonderful.